the way that clinical trials work, are there protocols that are submitted to the FDA and those protocols are approved for a certain number of subjects and then they stop and then they look at all the data and then they figure out how to move forward. And so that's just how the research community works. If you know anything about evidence-based research or peer-reviewed like evidence-based practices, it's a long, treacherous road to prove efficacy and to take a experimental drug, experimental medicine to market safely. And so um, we're waiting for the data analysis of this. And then we're on track for expanded access to begin hopefully in the next 12 to 18 months. Again, the pandemic has kind of put everything on pause and we'll see how it goes. But anything with research, if there is a hiccup, if there is a severe adverse reaction, things like that, everything has to pause. And the, you know, the path moving forward is always uncertain. That's what research is. Mm -hmm. So expanded access would just mean like more therapists will be able to so expanded uses? access would be that there's really specific recruitment protocols and in expanded access, there might be more flexibility around it. So maybe you'll have more integration therapy sessions instead of just three. Like maybe instead of having your medicine sessions spaced four weeks apart, like they are written in this protocol, like maybe... We can space it out every two months and extend it so you have more integration. And so there's a possibility of kind of the protocol being a little bit more flexible with people's scheduling and the way that we kind of look at this treatment when it goes to market. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, no, no. <gasps> I, th I think it's clear. I, basically, the initial study is to demonstrate some efficacy and so you need to have a metric in which that works if you don't have some sort of population that you're meeting like some demonstrable need for then you can't really justify moving on to a, a broader population that's um, why it's like very complicated obviously you know there's only so many study sites and you have to live within a certain radius of that study site to be able to make it to these appointments and then also have a support person who can drive you to and from these the medicine sessions. And if you, for example, are a military veteran with PTSD living in San Diego and Los Angeles is the closest site, driving two and a half hours each way for an appointment isn't going to be feasible and it's not going to be successful. And so part of it is, you know, do we feel like you are resourced enough in your support system and in your location and in your work schedule, depending on what your job is, that matches up with the availability of researchers to even participate. And so it's not so much about whether or not you would qualify. It's like time and circumstance and, and set and setting, really.